The next section is going to be the footer, which will be a kind of simple one. We will have a heading, paragraph, input field with a button and some copyright text down below. Let's go ahead and start to write the HTML markup. I'm going to insert your new comments, section 4, end of section 4, then open section element with the class section 4. So overall we will have three different parts in the footer. The first one is going to be the heading and the paragraph which are placed on the left side. Let's open div element which is going to be the wrapper of those two elements. I'm going to assign to it class section 4 text. Then open the h2 heading element with the class section 4 heading. And as the content I'm going to insert here sign me up. As for the paragraph, it should have class section 4 paragraph. And as the content, I'm going to insert here be the first to know about new products. Alright, so that's it about the first part. The next one is going to be the form element, which will include the input element and the button. So let's open form with the class sign up form. Then I'm going to insert here input with the type email. Next I'm going to insert here class sign up form input. And also let's use placeholder attribute with the value enter your email. Alright, that's it about the input. Next comes button. Let's set its type to submit and also assign to it class attribute with the value sign up form btn. Actually the button will be represented by the font awesome icon so let's open i element with the class names fas fa arrow right. Okay that's it about the form element finally I'm going to create the paragraph for the copyright text so let's open p element with the class copyright and then as the content let's insert code and create followed by the copyright sign I'm going to use here HTML5 entity I mean ampersand copy semicolon and then insert here all rights reserved Alright, so with the HTML markup we are done and we can customize this section. Let's insert new comments in the CSS file. We need section 4, end of section 4. Then select section elements. At first I'm going to define width and height. Let's set width to 100%. As for the height, I'm going to make it 30% of the viewport. And also change the background color. Let's use here color 222. Okay, next I'm going to take care of the layout of all three parts. I'm going to use Flexbox. Let's set display property to flex. And then in order to create some space around the items, I'm going to use justify content with the value space around. And also besides that, I'm going to create some space at the top and bottom inside of the section. For that, let's use padding with the values 3 RAM and 0. Alright, so right now all three parts are placed horizontally in a row, but actually we don't need that. I'm going to place the copyright paragraph at the bottom of the section. So let's take care of its position. I'm going to assign to it position absolute. Then in order to align the paragraph according to its parent element, I'm going to set the position of the section element to a relative. And after that, let's define the bottom position of the paragraph and make it 3 RAM. Okay, so with the layout we are done. Let's go ahead and start to customize each of the elements. I'm going to select the wrapper div element. Let's assign to it 
text transform uppercase because we need both elements, I mean the heading and the paragraph, to be uppercase. Next, I'm going to take care of the heading, so let's select it. I'm going to increase the font size, let's make it 4 RAM. And also make the text bolder using font weight with the value 900. And finally, change the color. I'm going to use here color A79A2D. Ok, so the heading looks good. Let's move on and style the paragraph. Let's select it. Change the font size, make it 1.5 RAM. As for the color, I'm going to use 888. Alright, that's it about the first part. Let's move on and take care of the form element. Inside of the form element we have an input and button and I'm going to place them side by side. For that I'm going to use Flexbox. And also in order to center both elements vertically let's use Align Items Center. So right now we have a little problem here. As you can see the form element ended up a little bit down. And to fix that I'm going to assign to the section element Align Items property with the value Flex Start. In this case, both flex items will end up at the top of the container. Alright, let's go ahead and customize the input element. Let's select it. First of all, I'm going to define width and height. Let's set width to 35 RAM. As for the height, I'm going to make it 5 RAM. Then create some space inside of the input using padding. Let's set it to 1 RAM on all four sides. And also change the border. I'm going to insert here 0.2 RAM, solid, and, and color A79A2D. Okay, next let's take care of the text. Let's change the font size, make it 1.6 RAM. Also make the text slightly bolder using font weight with the value 700. Next I'm going to create some space between the letters using letter spacing 0.1 RAM and also change the color, make it again A79 A to D. Alright, that's it regarding the input element and before I customize the button I'm going to change the color of the placeholder attribute. So let's select input element followed by the placeholder and assign to it color A79A2D. Alright, now it's time to take care of the button. At first let's change its position. I'm going to set its position to relative. We use here position relative because we need to use left property and in case of static position, which is the default one, we can't access this property. Let's set left property to minus 4.5 RAM. Okay, so the button is positioned and now we need to customize it. First of all, let's define width and height. I'm going to make both of them 4 RAM. Then change background color, make it 3, 3, 3. And also change the color, use again A79, A to D. Ok, so the button already looks good, but we need to add to it a couple of more styles. I'm going to get rid of default border, so let's set it to none. Then increase the font size, make it 1.8 RAM. And also change the type of the cursor, make it pointer. Alright, that's it about the form element. Now we need to customize the last element in this section, which is the paragraph. So let's change the font size, make it 1.7 RAM. Also I'm going to make font lighter using font weight with the value 200. Then change the color, make it E, E, E. And also create some space between the letters. Let's make it 0.1 RAM. 
All right, next I'm going to create the border at the top of the paragraph. So let's use border top property with the values 0.1 RAM, solid, and as the color, let's use 888. And also, let's create some space using padding top with the value 6 RAM. Okay, so the border is created, but as you see, it's extended according to the width of the paragraph. We need the border to take up the entire width of the page. So I'm going to increase the width of the paragraph. Let's set it to 100%. Now the size of the border is increased, but the paragraph has ended up on the left side. And in order to fix that, let's use text align center. All right, so with the footer, we are done. Next, we have to take care of the navigation. So let's move on.